So speaking about myself, my name is uh, Dennis Magda. I'm a head of developer relations at Grid Gain right now. Also, I'm a Apache Ignite project management committee member and uh, contributor to the project. Uh, so my uh, uh, zone of interest right now lays in the direction of memory computing, caches and databases. But before that, I spent probably 10 years uh, working for with Java communities under the Java development. I used to work with Sun Microsystems and Oracle developing uh, Java frameworks and Java GDKs for the application developers. So still pretty good uh, background in that landscape. And today, so how we decided to put this session together is to uh, kind of get together and discuss what are the options we have that can help us to accelerate or boost performance of our existing MySQL uh, databases. As you can see from the schedule, I will start. For, my, my talk would be about in memory computing is one of the uh, possible options, but at the same time, uh, Rene will join me later and co-present about another approach when you can use proxy SQL for uh, to achieve high availability and scalability with your existing deployments. But anyway, so right now we are we begin by talking about the memory computing. And so the agenda will be pretty straightforward. First of all, before diving into the details of uh, solutions, so basically before selling or bugging you with any kind of technical details or architectural ideas, I want to raise a question of why memory computing is suitable for MySQL deployments acceleration. What's the purpose and why we would uh, go for that route? After that, uh, Apache Ignite will be used as a reference platform for our conversation today. You can imagine that Apache Ignite is not the only one in memory computing software. We have many caches, we have memory databases, etc. But I know like Apache Ignite, that's the project I, I, I am contributing to and I help to deploy it in production. But anyway, some of the ideas, we will be able to reuse them for any other project you would like to select for the MySQL acceleration. And when it comes to the Apache Ignite, we are going to see how, uh, how to use it as a write-through cache as a distributed write through cache for our MySQL databases. Because if you deploy Ignite as a cache, it doesn't mean that your application layer needs to keep both your MySQL database and Ignite cluster consistent. Ignite can take care of that if you like. Also, many of us who uh, work with MySQL instances uh, benefit from running transactions, some of the records uh, are required to be uh, updated transactionally. And I want to show you that what you are getting with Apache Ignite if you are accelerating some of the MySQL subsets and if you're keeping them in memory, and then you need to update that in memory data in your MySQL uh, layer uh, transactionally. So what Ignite gives to you, this Ignite provides you to distributed transactions. We will finish my part of the today's meeting with a neat and quick demo. With that demo, I'm not going to show you how Ignite improves uh, performance of your MySQL deployments, but I would rather show you how easy it is to take and deploy a patch Ignite cluster on top of a MySQL instance and run the first queries against Ignite and how Ignite in its turn keeps your MySQL database updated. So that's what I want to show you. And for sure, we will have plenty of time for the Q&A session. So first thing first, why in memory computing with MySQL? Why we would even have this conversation today? And generally speaking, the answer is uh, elementary, speed and scale. That what in memory, any in memory computing uh, software gives to you. Let it be uh, in memory cache like Redis or in memory databases like WorldDB or MemSQL or data grids like Hazelcast, Oracle Coherence or Apache Ignite is in memory computing platform. All of those products, by definition, are designed to serve and store data in memory, and they are designed as scalable, horizontally scalable systems. So what's the matter about the speed? And here is we as software engineers and architects, we like precise numbers. And I find uh, this uh, table handy. What we have in the first column, we have some of the system, basic system events, operations that our <coughs> CPU cores need to complete. In the 
column in the second column we have actual latencies basically that show how much time it takes uh, for our cpu unit to complete any of the operations to the left and what's most what's most interesting for us today is the final last column which is called scaled latency uh, that column shows uh, how much time those operations would take in our universe in the units that are much more easily perceived by us humans we know like how that nanoseconds microseconds and milliseconds are extremely low measurements in units, but we cannot fully appreciate them we uh, get used to live in the world uh, when all the time is counted in seconds minutes and days and months right we can feel the time somehow and that's why if we scale those actual latencies to the latencies of our universe and take a look at uh, these four records we will see how vast is the difference between the main memory access and disk io it's like the difference between the minutes and days in our universe and that's why in memory computing software matters and that's why generally from the speed uh, capabilities perspective it's a good enough uh, option for you to consider if you're experiencing any uh, performance hiccups with your relational databases like mysql but that's about speed right that's like physics what's about scalability so what can we get from ignite here because generally speaking mysql as any other relational database has built-in caching capabilities you can enable kind of in memory the caching capabilities of mysql or you can use caching capabilities of your linux or windows uh, operating system it's all available uh, but the benefit of distributed uh, scalable systems is that you can scale horizontally so let's say that you your first uh, uh, solution with apache Ignite and mysql goes with just two nodes apache Ignite cluster and that cluster is enough to fit all the data you want to cache in memory and that cluster cpu's horsepower is enough to handle all of your uh kind of operations that are coming from the application layer but then let's say you want to store more data in memory or you need more cpus because you're you're either you're getting more users that are interacting with the cluster and what you do you just elegantly scaling out your in-memory cluster you need four nodes you will get four nodes you need eight nodes you will get eight nodes and that happens just you know uh, just as a click of a button and those speed and scale characteristics are generic and they're generic for all the distributed in memory computing solutions whether it be caches databases or platforms but today i want to particularly focus on apache ignite as one of the examples and representatives of that of the technological landscape and i want to review it in the usage scenario as a distributed write through cache that can be integrated together with our mysql database so let's do a speed dating with apache right like five or ten minutes speed dating so uh, first of all what's what's apache ignite so apache ignite is one of the top five projects of the apache software foundation uh that's the same foundation that is the home of uh, apache cassandra apache kafka hadoop and many other well-known technologies we use daily in, uh, in our production environments and uh, when we're talking about top five what are those top five ranks so ignite is top two uh, in the dev list activity so we have a lot of contributors that are coming and helping us to uh, build this project and it's like uh, third in the top five mailing list so it means that there is a lot of interest from the application developers and engineers and as they have a lot of questions and they're looking for suggestions and they're coming to our mailing lists and asking uh, for support looking for support and reporting some of the issues etc so pretty well known and uh, uh, project uh, in the current days and right now if to talk about uh, ignite capabilities generally speaking that's the platform and as a, any platform it goes with many building blocks but to make things uh, simpler for you i usually envision ignite uh, uh, you know as a distributed multi-tier storage and on top of the distributed multi-tier storage ignite provides uh, a, sub, a set of different apis like apis for key value apis for sql apis for transactions 
or for training of your machine learning models. And all of those APIs are integrated into the distributed uh, multi-tier storage. The multi-tier storage itself is split into two tiers. The in-memory tier, Ignite by definition, has to be able to keep data in memory and serve data from memory, but also uh, its storage capabilities are not limited uh, to RAM. It can equally well persist data on disk and work with on disk data. For instance, today what we are going to see is how Ignite is used as a cache on top of your relational databases of MySQL, and MySQL will be used as a disk tier for Ignite. At the same time, Ignite can persist and keep all the data in its own distributed native persistence. So what you see on this picture in the middle in red, uh, that's available in open source, that's available for everybody. In Ignite, most of the capabilities I would say are available uh, in open source. And to the left and to the right in blue box, uh, you can see uh, some extra enterprise features that are provided by GridGain. GridGain is uh, one of the major contributors to Apache Ignite, one of the major contributors to the Apache Software Foundation. Uh, but whenever we are talking about platform, usually when you have a platform like Apache Ignite, you would select it for, you would use it for, like you would have different purposes, how you would use it. Uh, and when it comes to Ignite, I would say there are two primary usage scenarios. First of all, Ignite is widely used as a cache, as a distributed write through cache. Sometimes it's also named as a memory data grid. And the story is simple. You just deploy your Apache Ignite cluster in the middle of your uh, disk layer, and then um, your applications can interact with Ignite directly, and Ignite provides your applications with SQL, transactional, compute, and many other APIs you have seen on the other slide. But what's uh, the primary difference between Ignite as a cache, and let's say Redis as a cache, is that Ignite can write through changes to your MySQL database. Our application layer don't need to care about data consistency between Ignite and MySQL. You just do changes in Ignite and Ignite write through, write, writes them back to MySQL. That's one of the classical use cases of Ignite. Uh, the other use case is Ignite as a database. As a, uh, that one I see is being used for uh, Greenfield applications. And uh, in that scenario, you, instead of uh, using a third party database, you would basically enable Ignite native persistence. All the data will be persisted in that layer. You don't need, uh, as a, some of those benefits, you don't need to keep uh, all the data in memory in Ignite. Uh, you keep all the data on disk and then you cache as much as you can afford in memory. And also that feature allows you to support instantaneous restarts of your Ignite cluster. If your cluster went down, you restart it the nodes are interconnected and you don't need to wait while the data is being loaded from disk to memory. Ignite can serve all the data from disk if the data is stored in its own persistence. But today, again, we are going to talk about this uh, usage scenario. When Ignite is used as a write-through cache with our MySQL database, so like how this architecture will look like. I do, it's, it's clear from the picture, but anyway, to reiterate on it. Ignite will be your horizontally scalable in memory storage. So you are deploying as many Ignite cluster nodes as you need. You are deploying whenever you like. It can be cloud on premise, it doesn't matter. Internally, Ignite is built, it's, a, it's like Cassandra, Ignite is a Java middleware. And that's why it's cross-platform by definition. You can deploy it whenever you like, no any limitations. Once you deploy it, once you, once you preload data to your Ignite cluster, then your applications can interact with it by using SQL transactions, map reduce like APIs and many more. I don't want to bother you with all those details. Also, here's what, I what I've said previously, automatic synchronization with MySQL is provided out of the box and it's supported by Ignite. What it means? And here we have two configure two, two synchronization options. The first one is write through. That one is used for strongly consistent systems. For instance, if you want any update that is issued from your application layer and processed by Ignite to be transactionally synchronized to MySQL, then you need to use write-through mode. In that case, your application, once it updates in your record, it will proceed with, with its source, like with, with, with its application execution logic only after both Ignite cluster and MySQL uh, database layer are updated. 
And this uh, synchronization mode is ideal for uh, read intensive uh, workloads or mixed workloads. However, if you're dealing, let's say, with uh, write heavy workloads, when you're doing like mostly writes in Madrid, then here is you can look at right behind synchronization mode. In that scenario, Apache Ignite uh, cluster will accumulate all the changes that happened in memory and then with some frequency or based on some of the parameters it will flush all these changes in bulk to your My, uh, mysql database but here is again you need to keep in mind that all this right before behind approaches they are eventually consistent it means that the changes will be eventually uh, written down to your mysql database but also it means that if for some reason for any reason a cluster goes down and some of the changes were not written back to mysql you might and lose those changes and but there are different if that's critical for you then use right through mode otherwise you can freely use right behind because on this picture what i show that's the usage scenario when ignite is deployed on top of mysql and all the changes come to it. ignite first but it also might happen that some of the some applications are updating your mysql database directly and then you want to bring some changes from mysql to ignite that's another configuration option we are not reviewing it today but we can discuss how to uh, arrange it with ignite uh, during the q a session but overall the overall goal of this architecture is to definitely what you regardless of the uh, bright performance uh, benefits you are about you're you're going to get an you are going to get an order of magnitude performance increase for your reads it depends on your use case and depends on the on queries you're going to run against ignite but overall for reads you should you should be certain that you are going to get a uh, improvements also when it comes to apache ignite uh and any other distributed system we need to know that with those systems you can run advanced operations or queries for instance, you can do queries with joins that join different tables. You can run some custom compute tasks. For instance, if you want to iterate through all the cities of Canada or United States or United Kingdom and do some calculations, you can create your custom Java.net or C++ task and it will be executed across all that slice of data. But, and, but if you want to execute some advanced operation like joins, etc., across some slice of data then you had better to collocate the data you need to store data based on their relation like we, we call it affinity based data distribution what you see on this slide let's say that we created two tables of caches in apache ignite the first one is country table and the second one is city table and what this distribution shows is that all the canadian cities are located on the same cluster machine and that's good that's good especially if you want to let's say send some computation that needs to iterate through all these records why so that because all the records are stored on the same machine and you don't need to shuffle data between your server nodes or between your cluster and your application because network is slow but if you can run some calculation on that machine where that already keeps all the data then you great you minimize uh, data movement and you improve your per overall performance of your distributed system and also uh, this technique uh, data distribution it's it's easy to use it right uh, but one of the biggest advantages is for advanced queries with joints uh, for instance like it's shown on this slide uh, let's say the table application wants to execute some join it, it needs to join two tables country and uh, cities uh, that query will be mapped to my both cluster nodes and when that query that query will be executed locally on those two cluster nodes and during the execution both nodes will be joining the data that is already available locally so there is no any data movement between these two cluster nodes no any data shuffling and that's how you can use both scalability and uh, speed perform uh, benefits of your cluster yes all these queries can be executed from memory with in memory data and there is no need data shuffling, expensive data shuffling during the joint phase. That's why you can just scale the data, all the related data is stored together, and you are truly getting good uh, uh, characteristics for your uh, SQL performance. Guys, by the way, someone probably has joined, and uh, uh, I, I'm hearing uh, some, some stuff. Yep. 
please go on mute, Scott. Generic, that's about generic configuration. That's how you can deploy Ignite as a write through cache on top of your MySQL database. And next uh, topic, theoretical topic for us to look at is what's about transactional consistency? Because we might end up having uh, some of the functions in our application, the methods that need to change records transactionally. And what if, like right now, we have this data in memory and I need to change this data transactionally, and also I want all these changes to be replicated transactionally to MySQL. You can do this with Ignite. Ignite supports both. By default, it operates as a strongly consistent system, but you can always relax. You can always get a relaxed consistency. For instance, in Ignite, we have transactional and atomic caches. Also, like when we are talking about caches, like caches or tables, it's all the same in Ignite, just the different APIs. But overall, internally, we use the same structures to store your data and to process your queries. So whenever you're hearing me, you know, using like caches or tables term, you can think of tables or of caches. It's up to you. And we have transaction yeah. caches. And we have atomic caches. <laughs> Guys, someone is uh, typing again, please. Uh, all right. And uh, next, uh, uh, distributed transactions in Ignite. In Ignite, we have transactional API. And what it means that, as it's shown on this diagram to the right, you can with Ignite, for instance, let's say you have a task, you want to debit one bank account and you want to credit another one. Uh, you can use transactional APIs available in Ignite. And when you Ignite will be committing this transaction, it will rely on its two-phase commit protocol to ensure that all the changes are written consistently across both your memory cluster and your MySQL database. If any failure or unexpected event happens during this commit, then Ignite is capable enough to roll back all the changes and bring your both Ignite cluster and MySQL database to consistent state. So here is you don't need to worry about that. Ignite coordinates transactional commit phase between both Ignite cluster and uh, MySQL storage. As a, but also it worth uh, mentioning that at the moment ignite supports transactions for key value apis for you it means that you need to know uh, a primary key a primary key of your uh, record that you want to change and then just you know instead of using this update uh, sql update you just can write uh, some put operation using your primary key. I have been working with many Apache Ignite users uh, and grid gain customers, and in my experience, that was not never that was never uh, a big deal for anybody, you know, just to convert SQL-based transactions to key value-based updates. But anyway, that's available. We also know that still, just for the sake of convenience, uh, the community Apache Ignite community has already provided. A transactional secure support and multi-version concurrency control in an experimental mode so you can uh, check it out and hope in some time in the future ignite will be capable running distributed transaction using standard sql commands that's also something that we uh, expect to come in the future all right that was uh, the theoretical part of my uh, conversation today and uh, as it was promised i want to finish my talk uh, with a nice demo so what i will be showing you today uh first of all i will be using grid gain uh, web console that's a monitoring and management tool you can see a screenshot of its dashboard to the left of the slide uh, and then i will uh, do the following. First of all, with that tool, I will connect to my MySQL database instance and I will import uh, the MySQL database schema configuration and turn it into an uh, Apache Ignite configuration. So the tool will help me to prepare a sample configuration for, for Ignite from the MySQL settings. After that, uh, the tool will help me to generate a sample project with some code snippets and i will use those code snippets to start my cluster and to load data 
uh, in memory from my SQL database. And after that, we will proceed with basic query. I will show you how to query data in Ignite using SQL, not QED, but SQL play. Uh, we will monitor the state of the cluster in bit, and then also it will be shown how Ignite uh, uh, writes through all the changes to your my, to my MySQL database. So that's like the whole idea and diagram related to this demo. Now let's jump uh, to the demo. I, I see guys that uh, some of you are posting questions. Uh, in 10 minutes, I will finish uh, this demo, if not sooner, and I will uh, answer all of them with players. So please bear with me. All right, what I have in here, I have uh, started a MySQL database instance on my laptop uh, in Docker. So right now, let me connect to the Docker instance. And that's my MySQL database that's running. So what are the tables? Uh, uh, let me try. Uh, yeah, okay, I need to switch to English. That's what happens. All right. I'm connected to my SQL. I have three tables. Uh, you might be familiar with this database, that the world database uh, that uh, has uh, all the countries, with all the cities, and languages people speak in those countries. And we use this, we will use this uh, database to experiment with Ignite as well. Uh, next, uh, I have uh, this grid gain web console deployed on my local laptop. You also can deploy it whenever you like. So what I'm going to do next, I need to store a special component of web uh, console. That's the web agent that will connect uh, my SQL with the tool. And then the same web agent will connect my Apache Ignite cluster with the tool. And I will be able to monitor it and run some SQL queries. Just in case, what I'm doing today, I'm just repeating the steps of this uh, demo, my SQL caching with uh, Apache Ignite. So you will get a reference to this demo. Uh, you will see it on my last slide of the presentation. I skipped some of the uh, steps purposefully. I don't want to waste time on that. Uh, but anyway, you will be able to boot and set up all the environment that I already have here. So what I'm doing next, uh, let me go to the configuration screen uh of uh, web console and here is i want to import i want to prepare an apache net configuration by importing uh the database schema of my sql so that's why first thing i want this tool to connect to my local mysql database all right it connected that's my schema and here is uh, it found all this all the tables and for all the table it will create a respective cache in ignite and we'll set it up with some you know default settings it, it's not something that we want to be bothered today so that's uh, the configuration that was prepared so far so here is what else as an apache ignite developer what you can do you can go ahead and change some settings you can change some of the default parameters i want to do nothing i just want to go ahead and download this project once I'm downloaded, I also kind of shortened the time. I opened the same project that I generated the same way before. And the only one change I did is I provided Ignite with this MySQL coordinate because what happens here, Web Console created this configuration, Spring XML configuration, one of the options you can use to configure your Ignite cluster. And here is uh, my Apache Ignite cluster nodes that you'll be studying they will they need to know how to connect to mysql to load data from mysql and to write through changes to mysql database also uh, in this sample project uh, we have some uh, uh, handy source code files so first of all i want to start my uh, pro process that will be keeping a subset of my data in memory on my local machine so let me start the first node so all I need to do, I'm using Ignite start APIs and providing this configuration. All right, the first node is up and running, uh, but here's today we're talking about a distributed world. So I wanna start uh, another instance of Ignite node. I wanna get to the, I wanna have two nodes cluster. 
All right, as you can see, I have two nodes in my uh, uh, cluster. And right now, if I'm jumping back to the web console screen, so I want to see what's going on. It's like almost no any CPU usage, heap is uh, empty. And here is, uh, I can see my two cluster nodes running on my local laptop. Uh, this cache is also like tables created, but there is no any data they need. So we don't have anything in memory. So that's why the next step is to load data from where, from our MySQL database. And for that, I can use this uh, simple application that was also automatically generated by Web Console for me. So what this application does, that's a Java application. It connects to my uh, two nodes cluster that I studied a minute ago. Once the application is connected, it will issue a set of uh, load cache commands. So it will say that load data for the city cache, country cache, and country language cache. And this command will be distributed to all my, to both cluster nodes. And those cluster nodes will go to the MySQL database and bring data from disk in memory. So that's how the loading happens. Just, you need to issue this command. Uh, so the application uh, successfully completed. So that's why, yeah. And now you can see that we have some data in memory. That's a tiny database and probably it's, it's not good for performance benefits to demonstrate performance advantages. The goal of this demo again to repeat, I wanna show you how simple it is to start with uh, Apache Net and MySQL, how you can deploy them quickly. Anyway, we have some data in memory right now. The cluster is up and running, two nodes cluster. And what's next? Let's run some simple queries. So that's why I pre-created some, I've created a SQL notebook. And here is what I have. Uh, the first query I wanna run is, returns the top populated countries in the world, China, India, and United States are the most ranked ones. Uh, also, as it was said, as it was discussed, uh, Ignite supports uh, joints or group by, so you can order data. With this query, I wanna join two tables, country and city, and I wanna get the most populated cities across these countries. All right most populated uh, cities. Okay, this tool has some issues, I think, some bug. But anyway, so I need to restart this query once again, and that's the top list, Seoul, St. Paul, and Shanghai. And just to, to, make, to make things clear, all these queries that I execute right now, they're execu being executed against Apache Net Cluster. We are not going to MySQL database. All the data from MySQL was brought to memory. Uh, and the next uh, example I want to show you is how Ignite write through all the changes to your MySQL database behind scenes automatically. So let's select one of the cities, some random city. Here is that one is with 315 ID. Uh, that's uh, San Paulo. Remember its population. And right now I wanna check that we have the same record with the same population in MySQL. I'm coming back to my MySQL console, so let me uh, paste this query. I don't need, we don't have this schema in MySQL. But if I execute this query, we have the same record in MySQL with the same population. So what I'm doing next, uh, I want to update this population. I execute this query in Ignite. Now I want to check that this population, yes, the population was updated in Ignite wonderfully. And also I expect Ignite to write through this change to MySQL for me. That, that's not my business, right? I want this to be the business of uh, Apache Ignite. And you see, yeah, the change was replicated to MySQL. So I just use this tool to do the changes in Ignite and Ignite takes care of the rest. And this, so to delete, you can delete. If anything is deleted in Ignite, uh, it will be deleted in MySQL. So I deleted this record. Let's double check. It's gone. And now, yeah, checking nothing is left in MySQL. So pretty simple. Overall, that's the whole demo. So what I've shown you, just to uh, summarize, I showed you how to instantly prepare an Apache Ignite configuration uh, by importing the information about existing tables in MySQL. 
Then we started two nodes Apache Ignite cluster. We quickly loaded this cluster with the data from MySQL, just using the existing APIs. And then I just, you know, executed some random queries with joins and SQL, Ignite, and whenever I was executing any updates or deletes, all those changes were uh, written back to MySQL. That's like, hopefully it took me no more than 10 minutes. Uh, so, and jumping back to our presentation, I would say those of you who are asking for about the slides or any other resources, the slides and IDBD recording would be distributed and available after this uh, event. And once you get these slides here, as you can find the references to the demo that I showed you today and some other details about Apache Ignite, etc. So we uh, scrap the surface today. So my goal of the presentation was not to uh, bug you with all the technical details or different usage scenarios of Apache Ignite. My goal was just to introduce you, you to Ignite as a viable and one of the options for your MySQL database acceleration. And if you wanna have any, uh, you wanna, if you want to learn more details or have any questions, that's the right moment to do so. Having said that, I'm switching to the Q&A. Uh, let me check the chat window. And just in case, guys, if you prefer uh, going on mute and talking to me, discussing, do this, because you don't need just uh, sit and listen silently. So and the question is, uh, by Courtney, is there a time frame on when transactions uh, with the production ready for the SQL uh, API? I can. I do not have any precise answer. I uh, I would say that uh, uh, Apache Ignite community uh, still wants to support that capability, but th what I see, there is no any kind of active uh, uh, and uh, development at the moment. They just the community switched to some other tasks, and they decided to uh, kind of postpone the development of the MVCC component. And that's like a good time, you know, to 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 experiment with what, what what has already been developed and provide more feedback. But anyway, so I think that just community decided to uh, work on something else. Hopefully it will be completed, you know, in a year or in a couple of years from now. I don't know. All right, uh, but in the meantime, I'm scrolling up. Let me, Okay, there are many questions. Good, 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 good. good. Uh, so yeah, the first questions, the slides. Yeah, the slides uh, uh, will be available. Uh, so, and there is the question: Why it is done uh, in this way? Why it's not done using replication? Uh, what, what, what do you mean under this question? What exactly? If you wanna, feel free to unmute and exp elaborate on this question. Yeah, hello. Uh, I uh, mean uh, that uh, we have uh, Tarantul and uh, we replicated it uh, uh, using a reading bin log yeah, of MySQL and uh, then insert uh, bin log uh, uh, into Tarantul. Why uh, the way uh, uh, it used uh, in Apache Ignite is better? So uh, it's it's not a it's not a it's not a question about a better solution. So what I what you are saying is that correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, you are dealing with the case when uh, MySQL database gets updated and you need to replicate those updates to Toronto, right? Yeah, it's correct. Yep. While I was what I was presenting today, I was showing a, a different architectural solution. In my solution, Ignite was the primary source of truth. So like basically you preloaded data in Ignite and now all the applications switch to Ignite as a primary like storage. And if all the changes are, if the primary copy of, is stored in Ignite and even in memory, then Ignite can replicate all those changes to let's say MySQL database. That's like a little bit different. But also to your question, it doesn't mean that Ignite cannot be used uh, the way you are saying. So there are also plenty of usage scenarios, let's say when uh, applications still update MySQL uh, directly, MySQL still stays as an active database and, and applications work with it. And then some of the changes 
of those MySQL updates need to be brought to Apache Ignite. In that case, uh, I know that uh, some people use Debezium to replicate changes from MySQL to Apache Ignite. You can use some other change data capture tools. So for that way, yes, but that's a little bit different configuration. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, what else? Uh, what advantages would be leveraged to gain overuse of the Redis cache? Uh, so here is again, uh, Redis is a wonderful and perfect uh, caching solution. Uh, Ignite is a little bit different uh, uh, beast. So you certainly you can see some of the features and capabilities intersection. But even when we are talking about the caching capabilities, uh, for instance, Redis is always deployed in a cache side pattern. First of all, right? You deploy Redis as a cache, and then if you need to keep consistent your Redis cluster with something else, then that's the that's uh, the task of your application. What I was showing you today, and hopefully this question was answered uh, during the demo part, Ignite can write through all the changes to your database. That's the first thing. The other uh, uh, advantage is that if you need more than a basic cache, for instance, if you need uh, a system that stores your data and the system that lets you analyze your data with SQL or you need to run compute tasks, then you will not get this with Redis. Uh, you, you can use Ignite, right? And also, if you want to go beyond the caching use case, Ignite is used as a cache and that's good. Uh, but if you want to go beyond the caching use case and use Ignite as a database, then you can use Ignite native persistence and you will be, you will get a classical memory database with both uh, persistence layer and memory layer you don't need to cache all the data in memory only a subset can be there and etc cetera, etc cetera. you can read more about that or if you have any follow-up questions feel, feel free to ask uh, mm -hmm. someone was saying that the slides were not visible hopefully that issue did not persist for a while uh, Yes, Scott is saying that he has no sound. So please post answer to following questions when convenient. One is Ignite SQL transparent, uh, required not going changes to application two. Mm. Yeah, let, let us, yes, Scott, if, if you still don't hear me, then let us take this question offline and we will respond to you later if you don't hear us. If you if your sound is fixed, just let me know and I will uh, respond verbally. Okay, so the other questions. There are many questions from Scott. Um, is it possible to start using write through cache without downtime? Uh, here is. Uh, let me see if I get this uh, question correctly. You, you will, I mean, that with write through cache, yeah, that's just, you know, cache and synchronization technique. When it comes to the downtime, is like how you survive cluster restart. If you use Ignite as a cache, that, of course, primary copy, let's say, is still allocated in MySQL, then after that cluster restart, you need to load the data from MySQL. And uh, the time of your downtime uh, depends on the data size in MySQL and on the data volume you need to bring to Ignite. So if you are talking about gigabytes, it can be probably a short downtime. If you're talking about terabytes, then we can take time right to uh, reload data and ignite after the restart. To kind of facilitate with the downtimes, that's one of the uh, advantages of Apache Ignite native persistence. If you use Ignite native persistence, even like uh, as in your, uh, even uh, is, is in your, like let's, let's take your example of uh, Tarantula and MySQL. And let's uh, assume that instead of Toronto, for some reason, you decided to experiment with Apache Ignite. But MySQL still right, keeps the, uh, the prime golden copy of records. So here is, let's say that during the very first load of your data from MySQL, if you load that into Apache Ignite, and if you had Apache Ignite native persistence enabled, then all the data also will be uh, stored on disk. And in that case, if you, let's say you restart your Apache Ignite cluster for any reason, you don't need to wait, you don't need to reload anything from MySQL. So generally all the data is already will be ignited, it will be 
on disk and once the cluster is interconnected uh, ignite will serve all the data from uh, your ssds or flash drives and all the memory layer will be uh, hydrated uh, in in background while you're cooling your cluster so if you want to sh the, uh, a short answer is that if you wanted to shorten the downtimes with the patch ignite is in memory uh, layer then just take a look at our native persistence oh excuse me i uh, mean another thing imagine uh, you have a legacy project Mm -hmm. and uh, you write uh, to mysql then you install uh, a cluster of apache ignite and uh, load uh, uh, the data from uh, mysql uh, into apache ignite uh, mm -hmm. and then uh, you need uh, to change your uh, configuration of application to start uh, write, uh, writing into uh, apache ignite yes but uh, the time uh, you load uh, the data from mysql and uh, change uh, config uh, is not uh, zero and uh, the time you change uh, your configuration you uh, can uh, write more uh, data into mysql which won't be loaded into apache ignite is it possible to reduce this uh, time i mean uh, inconsistency uh, so, so here is, uh, I would say that you still like if your applications are going to uh, work with the data stored in Apache Ignite, you still need right, to, to, to modify them, some of the applications. And it means that you need to redeploy those applications. So here is, I don't know, that's, uh, that's expected, but that, that kind of applications downtime should be minimal, right? You just created a new version of application and that version of the application right now also can interact with Apache Ignite uh when it comes to the replica ch changes replication between my sequel like let's say from my sequel to apache ignite so here is i know that some of the guys uh, if you wanted to shorten this uh delta right the time lag between the changes be between the state of the data in ignite and my sequel then some of the people experiment with the frequencies they might uh, send those uh, uh changes from my sequel to ignite as soon as they happen or some of them, you know, just prefer to accumulate those changes in batches. So probably I would play with uh, the amount of how long, how long your uh, change uh, CDC tool waits uh, before any changes will be uh, replicated from uh, MySQL to Ignite. Hopefully I got your question properly. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Okay. All right, what else? Uh, okay. If there are more number of Ignite nodes, do we need to increase the nodes of MySQL DB as well? So no, 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 you don't need it. I mean, MySQL, you would scale it, you will scale it up. And uh, if most likely, if you need to uh, give more resources to MySQL, you uh, might uh, want to deploy to a uh, machine with more capacity, with more disk space, etc. Or you might use some distributed solutions for MySQL, right? Like proxy SQL, I guess. Uh, but generally, as of Ignite, that's your independent, like in memory cluster, and uh, it can store all the data you have in MySQL or subset of the data you have in MySQL. So, what's next? Uh, so, how does Ignite handle huge MySQL DBs close to one terabyte, for example? So, you remember that slide when I showed that Ignite scales, right? And that's horizontal scalability and limited. So generally, we don't have any limitations. We have deployments of Ignite for terabytes and like petabytes, etc. We have clusters of Ignite uh, of hundreds of nodes, um, uh, or like cluster in size that are close to thousand nodes. And usually, you deploy such large clusters when you want to store uh, a lot of data, like terabytes, or when you need to have uh, a lot of CPUs to process uh, a bunch of queries. So that's not a big deal. So Ignite can easily deal with terabyte. Uh, is there an example of real world use case study with uh, high volume of traffic or different sectors, e commerce, for example? Yep. Uh, so today, that, that was, that's a technical right talk. And I uh, purposefully skipped uh, uh, the coverage of use cases of Ignite, etc. Uh, but uh, if you, you can go to Ignite website, you can see some of the use cases are featured there. Ignite is, uh, is used by many. Uh, across different industries. For instance, Ignite is used uh, by financial institutions like American Express, 
uh, like Barclays, Sberbank, and many other. Those companies uh, uh, speed up their uh, financial services internally. Some of them even uh, uh, do and process uh, payments with Apache Ignite because Ignite is scalable and also supports transactions. Also, we have use cases, let's say, from uh, airlines industry that suffers right now. But for instance, American Airlines uses Apache Ignite uh, in production. UPS uses Apache Ignite to calculate uh, routes for delivery of your packages. Uh, so who else? Uh, like I know that PayPal uses Apache Ignite. So the, a list of companies is endless and there are no any specific limitations pertaining to an industry. So usually people select, you know, but like the difference is that how Ignite is used. Some of the companies use Ignite as a cash layer, like what we were exploring today, while some of the companies use Ignite as a database with its own persistence. For instance, ING Bank uses Ignite for uh, real-time processing of payments of their contemporary uh, system. And in that case, Ignite is operates as a in-memory database with its native persistence. So different use, different configuration options. Uh, and uh, is it an alternative to Memcache? As, a, as a, when I was talking about Redis and like Memcache, there is, there is certainly some intersection of capabilities, but I would say that Memcache and Redis are good and uh, lightweight caching solutions. If you just, my, my personal opinion, if you just want, you know, to deploy some tiny small cache, accelerate, you know, some, some, some application, then Memcache to Redis might be good to go. If you need a more advanced caching solution uh, that supports SQL, that supports execution of your Java compute tasks or .NET tasks, if you need transactions, if you need uh, capabilities such that cache can write through changes to your database, then use Ignite. Ignite provides all that, all those advanced capabilities. But it means that Ignite is not lightweight as Redis, right? Because Ignite does many more. So probably like when you will be starting one Ignite cluster node, that cluster node will be utilizing like 200 megabytes of your RAM for its internal needs. But like Redis would utilize more, but Redis, Redis does something else. And the same is true about Memcache. Uh, Scott, by the way, you said that you did not hear me. Hopefully, I guess your uh, sound is fixed. Uh, so the question from you. A real world example of throughput needs uh, this high uh, the advertising industry measurement of impressions, clicks, and stalls. Yeah, like Scott is talking about, uh, uh, yeah, the, the industry when you just need to kind of measure uh, visits, uh, et cetera. Like, for instance, when you want to analyze what happens with your website, and then you can react uh, somehow. I, for instance, Marketo, you know that Marketo is one of the uh, Ignite is used for that. And we have this case study with Marketo. Marketo is like one of the tools used by marketing professionals and Ignite is used there for some of the kind of tasks for to, to accelerate some of the performance. Uh, uh, the question from Ravi, can one pick and choose uh, which tables to load in Ignite versus leave in MySQL? Yes, absolutely. So in this example, I showed you uh, uh how to load everything from mysql all the tables the whole the whole schema but also it's up to you you can kind of cache only one table you even can do more you can cache only a subset of one table for instance you want to cache probably let's say like some thousand of records of my or my sql and ignite and you're not bothered about the rest also uh what you can do the same apache ignite cluster if you have several MySQL databases, or like, like MySQL Postgres databases, and you want to cache them in the same cluster. You can use Ignite as a shared in-memory layer. So for instance, one table in Ignite, or like one cache in Ignite, can be mapped to my MySQL, uh, to one table in one MySQL instance, the other cache in Ignite can be mapped to another table in another MySQL instance. But for your application, that will be just you know one shared in-memory layer, while down below Ignite can, uh, work with many disjointed MySQL databases, or like Postgres databases, or Oracle databases. That's like what we name as a digital integration hub architecture, like when Ignite is used like as a shared layer on top of several databases. It's possible, it's doable. All right, I think uh, finally we have run out of questions. So anyway, guys, uh, those of you who are still, who still hear me, thanks for joining this. It was a pleasure presenting to you. Again, as it was shown on this uh, Learn More slide, 
uh, here is the first point which I would share with you. If you think that Ignite is useful somehow for your needs, uh, let it be as a cache for MySQL or for other tasks, just go to the website, explore it. If you have any questions, here is you have my Twitter handle, you can reach me out on Twitter or you can just send a uh, question to our community, to our mailing list, their list to use your list, please do this.